George, what do you got up your sleeve? Uh, Groucho, Johnny Ross and James Dixon are waiting to talk to you. So folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Johnny Ross and James... How do you do? Oh. Johnny Ross and James Dixon, man. Eh? Obviously, one of you is a female impersonator. Now, which one is it? I am. I'm Johnny Ross. What is uh, the idea of calling yourself Johnny? Why did you get a boy's name instead well, of a name like uh, Alice or something? By the time my folks got around to me, they had so many kids that they ran out of names. Oh, it's like old Mother Hubbard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> old Mother Hubbard, she went to the cupboard to get her poor daughter a dress. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so was her daughter, I guess. <laughs> Your name is Johnny Ross? Mm, James Dixon. Ja oh, James Dixon. Huh? What sort of work do you do, Jim? I'm a minister and teacher. A minister. Well, hand me the coal shovel because... Uh, <laughs> you might as well get to work feeding those fires. <laughs> Reverend, I hope you don't consider this blasphemous, but based on the people I know, I have a hunch that the ones in the cellar uh, having a lot more fun than the ones up in the attic. Well, you can get a chance maybe sometimes to go into the other place and find it out. <laughs> well, I was kind of planning on it. Huh? <laughs> you say you're a minister and, yeah. uh, and a teacher? Yes, sir. Uh, where do you do these uh, simultaneous <clears throat> jobs? Uh, Groucho, I'm minister for the Central Church of Christ in Anaheim and right. have been a teacher for George Pepperdine College here in Los Angeles in the Department of Business and Religion. Well, Johnny, that's, that's you. You haven't changed your name since I spoke to you no. last. What is your husband's name, Frankie? I don't have a husband. Oh. Well, are you interested in matrimony? Well, yes, but I'm in no hurry. No. Do you have someone in mind? No. No, I'm Well, looking. perhaps I can find a husband for you. We have a well? standby minister here in case we get some action. <laughs> What qualifications uh, do you expect a man to have before you'd become interested enough to uh, pursue him? Well, he should be tall, tall. and have a clean appearance and uh, a good sense of humor, be intelligent and a good businessman and... Um, well, how about the Reverend here? He's tall, mature, intelligent, has a clean shade, a good sense of humor, and what's even more important, he has a very good future because he has... Excellent connections. Well, Groucho, I've been now, married. Jim, how about years. you? I've been married 43 years. Very you've been, pleasant. You've been married 43 years? That's right. Johnny, it seems to me you're pretty choosy when it comes to landing a victim. What do you have to offer a man? For example, are you a good cook? Well, I'm a fair cook, but not, not too much. Once or twice a week is enough of that. In other words, now you're looking for a tall man with a clean shade who's crazy about frozen dinners. <laughs> if he can light the oven. <laughs> Johnny, I assume you have a job, and from the kind of life you are apparently accustomed to, I imagine you have a pretty cushy job, but what do you do for a living? Well, I own a real estate business in La Cunata. I don't blame you for staying single. <laughs> You're in the real estate business uh -huh. in Southern California? Uh-huh. Well, how, is, how, is, how is business? Well, it's real great. Uh, 1959, I sold over two and a half million dollars worth of real estate. And at 5% commission, that's a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh. <laughs> He was just a man of the cloth, didn't you? I could support a man in the style which he's unaccustomed if the right one came along. Well, all you tall men with clean shades, get in line. <laughs> right behind a medium tall man with a dirty shirt. That's me. <laughs> well, you, uh, you're, you're a nice couple. couple you're a nice couple, and I've enjoyed cheating with you. I mean, chatting with you. <laughs> well, let's play you bet your life, and uh, you understand the game? I think I do. Yeah. The... Uh, $300 ones are more expensive, and they get progressively easier as you go down. Now, what category have they chosen? Uh, yes, cities and towns of the United States, right? That's United correct. The United States. Well, okay, one of you pick the well, first one. Well, yeah. $300 ones over there. Start at $300? Yeah. yeah. All right. In what state are Lafayette, Kentland, K-E-N-T-L-A-N-D, and LaGrange? Georgia. No, I'm sorry, it's Indiana. <laughs> well, you still have... Three more opportunities to make $500. Another $200, huh? For $200, in what state are Lynn, Lowell, and New Bedford? <laughs> Massachusetts. Massachusetts is right. You now have $200 and two more chances. Okay. Another $300 one. 
For 300 in what state are Sparta, S-P-A-R-T-A, -A, Durham, and Moxville? Sparta, Durham, and Moxville. North Carolina. North Carolina is absolutely correct. You've got yourself $500 and uh, one more chance. You get the 500 Yeah, you'll, you'll be back yeah. anyway. Well, you're breezing home now, you know. <laughs> in what state are Murfreesboro, Jonesboro, Woodstock, and Rockford? Oh. Talk it over. Uh, Dracho, they're in the only state that's changed its name from its original state, that of Franklin to Tennessee. Well, that's a very nice speech, but this happens to be Illinois. <laughs> well, they're all in Tennessee, too. All of them in Tennessee? This man claims they're all in Tennessee. <laughs> all of them, uh... All of them? Uh, anyway, we will check up on this. If his answer is correct, we will send him the extra money. We will send you the Thank additional you. money, but I wouldn't rely on him. <laughs> How about you? You. Yeah, you can rely on me. <laughs> and you did win your $500 yeah. already, so we'll see you a little later on. See you later, Johnny. Thank you. Got you. Congratulations. Groucho, Peggy Brown would like to talk to you now, and her partner is a very special guest, one of the uh, leading citizens of the state of Georgia, Mr. Ellis Arnold. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the next one. Say the secret word and divide $100. Uh, Mr. Arnold, I'm glad to see you. That's a great name, Benedict Arnold. I remember it for years, huh? And Peggy, I'm glad to see you, too. Thank you, sir. Mr. Arnold, aren't you the governor of Georgia? I was governor at one time. I finished my term in 1947, Groucho. Well, uh, Governor, perhaps I can find you a job. What, what are you good for? I, I mean, uh, <laughs> tell us a little about yourself. You are quite considerate in trying to help me get a job, but quite frankly, I have too many jobs now. I'm in the law business. I'm senior <laughs> partner of Arnold, Golden, and Gregory, chairman of the board of Coastal States Life Insurance Company, chairman of the board of the National Association of Life Insurance Companies, president of the Society of Independent Motion Picture Producers, president of the Independent Film Producers Export Corporation, so I find plenty to do. Well, that's certainly an imposing list of uh, positions you have, but how do you make a living? Well, well, unfortunately, on the side, I lecture and write books and do things like that. Now, Peggy, how do you feel standing next to a famous Southern comfort? Well, great. I mean, uh, <laughs> Southern uh, governor. Gracho, I'm always most delighted to stand beside a distinguished Southern gentleman, such as our honorable governor here. Isn't she pretty and smart, too? Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> well, you, that's quite broad-minded, coming from a New England Yankee, such as you are. What part of Vermont are you from, Peggy? Gracho, I'm from the extreme southern part of Vermont, a little place called Sunbury, North Carolina. Now, why did you leave uh, in Carolina, Peggy? What brought you to southern uh, California, I ate? Well, my first trip to the south, I mean, the southern part of California, yeah. was made when I came out in July for the universe pageant. You, you all was a beauty contest winner, huh? Well, I was. I represented my fast state of North Carolina in the oh. pageant held in Long Beach in July. Oh. This is rather a rare treat for us. We haven't had a beauty contest winner up here since last week. <laughs> now, Governor, you said you were in some official capacity in the motion picture industry. Isn't it unusual for somebody in Georgia to be involved in Hollywood's uh, leading industry? Well, Groucho, uh, let me uh, set you straight first. I wish you would. Uh, on, this, uh, on this question, before I undertake to answer it, uh, and that is that Hollywood, Southern California, technically, was included in the land grant from the King of England to Oglethorpe when he deeded him the colony of Georgia. It was westward to the sea. So actually, it is not unusual for Georgians to be engaged in Hollywood or connected with the motion picture industry because we are part and parcel of the same fabric. But now, if you ask me, in view of the state lines that now exist, presently exist, if it's unusual for Georgians to be involved in the motion picture industry, the answer is no. Some of the outstanding stars are Georgians, writers, Georgians, producers, Georgians. We rather take great pride in your great industry here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well. <laughs> Is this the speech you're going to make in June? <laughs> now, how do you get along with Hollywood's glamour girls? 
Do you ever get to meet Marilyn and Jane and Gina and the rest of them? That's one of the great thrills in being connected with this industry mm -hmm. is to have had the pleasure of meeting so many of the movie stars. And you have good connections. Huh? They are wonderful people, and fortunately I have had pretty good connections, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I have found the glamour is truly glamour and that these stars are truly wonderful people. They are like your neighbor next door, really. Well, answer one question. Are there any houses for rent in your neighborhood? <laughs> Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> this fellow must be a bachelor. No, 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 not at all. You're married? Oh, yes, you happily married. You too. sound like a bachelor. No, I think a man can always appreciate Pulchritude, yeah. feminine pulchritude. Feminine. Yeah, oh, you sure can, yeah. <laughs> this, lo this lovely lady with me here tonight is a beauteous object. This is wonderful. But she isn't even from Georgia, she's from North Carolina. She's my neighbor to the north. <laughs> you You've got neighbors all around you, haven't you? <laughs> is your wife a Georgia peach like no, Ty Cobb? She was my neighbor to the south. She was a Florida belle. Uh -huh. And because I well, love my names for all of them, huh? <laughs> because I love my state so much, when I saw this fair flower blooming to the south in Florida, there he is. He's back at the convention. <laughs> I plucked her and brought her to Georgia, yeah. and thereby enriched my native state. <laughs> Spoken like a true politician and a cowardly husband. <laughs> do you have any little governors running around the house? Uh, yes. You yes, do, huh? Yes. Uh, we have a son, 21, who will be graduated in June from college. Is this your uh, idea or is this his idea? <laughs> well, uh, it's his and mine. Mine and his you're, and my wife's, too. You're, you're the, oh, yes. you're the three of you yes. are convinced yes. that he's yes. going to graduate. Yes, huh? we believe so. There's no uncertainty about this at all. Well, huh? we've been working at it right assiduously. Yeah. You uh, mean you've been doing his homework? Groucho, no. let me go back to the question. Will you permit me to do this, please? <laughs> then you ask uh, if we had any other little governors. We've got a delightful yeah, It isn't young... easy to shake you off, guys. <laughs> We've, I've always learned that he who holds a microphone can talk the most. Yeah, but don't forget, I got one too. <laughs> you are a tenacious man there, Gov. Uh, we have a delightful, beautiful young daughter, 14. 14. Who was our souvenir of the mansion and the governorship. She was born to us there, and this is unusual in my state, because in the history we've only had one other child born to a governor and his wife while in office. Well, that is unusual. Yes, it's I've unusual. never seen a stork flying over the governor's mansion. Well, uh, I've seen a lot of vultures are hanging around. <laughs> well, you're very proud. You're a proud father. Yes, I am. Grandpa. And uh, I am, too. I have three children, too. Yes, I've read about you and your family and heard about you. Did you read my book? Yes, I did. Did you like it? And by the way... You know, you... it's yes, on the I... best self. <laughs> Push me too hard, but let me say this. Yeah. Not only did I like it, but you bought it. I huh? bought it and paid for it too. Now, unforgivable. This is a proof among authors as to who are their devotees and who are not. Well, now, I, I've been an admirer of yours for many, many years, Gov. Thank you. Know you. I hope you admire me more now that I've shown my good heart and good disposition towards you, sir. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> right, Joe. Relating, if I may, to my lovely wife and your book, uh, <laughs> couldn't you, couldn't and you, me. Couldn't you revise them and put them in the order of their importance? Well, <laughs> shall we say importance to whom? You or me, you know. <laughs> this is well, you are my wife. Uh, wife's maiden name was Mildred Delaney Slemons. I mention this only because this Delaney word has a connotation to someone yes, not far have. removed from where I now stand. Well, and you did read the book. I did read the book. <laughs> I tell you why I use that name. Because I, there were a lot of things in the book, and I've been talking about a lot of people, and personally, and not all, and frequently, vindictively. And I didn't want to get uh, involved in lawsuits, and the only way you can do that, so I took the most, what I thought was the most uh, ambiguous and silly name, and it turns out that this was your wife's name. Now, therefore, and since I'm a lawyer, do, if you do not watch your step here, we are laying the groundwork for a libel suit. You are. Yes. You know, I go around suing people. Sometimes I win lawsuits, too. But everybody is named Delaney in the book. Uh, how, and, uh, what would you base it on? Well, this comment here, when you talk about a silly name, 
This is libelous as applied to my wife and to me and my posterity. Governor, I didn't say it was a... Did I say silly? Yes, you did. I didn't mean silly. I hope there's a transcript of this program being made. <laughs> It's a good old Irish name. That's Actually, right. I named him after Jack Delaney, who was a great light heavyweight fighter many and you years do, ago. And you do think well of the name. I think well of the book and of the name. Well, yes. good. It's That's a fine name. I accept your apology. Well, I, can't, I, I, I can't tell you how but I like your cigar. <laughs> politics or just in this uh, silver voice uh, governor over here oh i mean this is a real william jennings bryan character here. by all means well, if you ran for president <laughs> i think you'd be elected well i'm interested in both i think the gentleman is very charming and uh i also worked for a state senator when i was back home on the east coast also you did yeah in what capacity i mean how many courts uh, no <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to continue this, but it's time for you to win some money, and I know you need it desperately. <laughs> now, Mr. Panama, would you bring out the question box for our silver-tongued orator here? Now, you understand how to play the game. Huh? The idea is to win $500. In that case, you get a chance at the, uh, chance at the big money later. Now, the tougher questions are the 300 and they get correspondingly easy as you go down the line. So you can, and one answer between you, so talk it over before you answer. No? I don't see it out here. All right. Yeah. You selected uh, famous landmarks, right? For $200. For $200. In what country is the famous Alhambra? Talk it over. Mm. Spain. Spain is right. You have $200 and three more chances to make five. Another $200. What is the name of the famous art museum in Paris? The Louvre. The Louvre. I went through the whole thing in 10 minutes last night. <laughs> I hold the record. <laughs> you now have $400 and two more chances. Another $200. In what city is the famous uh, T-R-E-V-I, Trevi or Trevi Fountain? Rome. That's where those three coins are, isn't it? <laughs> And you have $600 and one more chance. Going for 300 this time. What do you think of my singing? Uh, Very good. I I'm wondering why you have not uh, developed this talent to a greater degree. Well, I, uh, as a matter of... <laughs> You want me to answer you? Oh, well, yes, a quick one. <laughs> April 29th, on the Bell Telephone Hour, I'm going to do the Mikado. Wonderful. Oh. That's true. In what city? Uh, you all stay home that night. Huh? <laughs> I don't tell you to turn on the set. Just stay home. Huh? <laughs> in what city would you, for two or $300, in what city would you find the League of Nations building? The Hague? No. Governor, you blew it. It's Geneva, Switzerland. I always say The Hague, too. Well, The Hague with that. Let's get on with that. Well, you did win uh, oh, $600, which $600. means that you'll be back in a little while to try for two, five, or $10,000. Congratulations. It was nice to see a couple of beauty winners from the South. All right, George, we'll have two couples to try for the big money tonight. Now, here's the first big question. Who's going to answer it? Uh, Johnny Ross and James Dixon won $500, so here they come right now to try for the big money. Uh, first, I have some good news for you. Our people have made a quick check, and you were right on that last question. And it says here, Murfreesboro, Jonesboro, Woodstock, and Rockford are in Illinois. But four towns whose names are close enough to be called right are also listed in Tennessee. So that makes your winning so far 800 bucks. Now, if you'll answer the big question, we'll bring your total for tonight up to $2,000. 5000 or 10000 So, uh, one of you pick a number for $10,000. Um, three. Put up a three, George. Now, you pick one for $5,000. I'll take the old seven. Old seven, all right. <laughs> <laughs> this 
boy's been to Vegas. <laughs> She's been to Vegas, not me. Now, if any other number comes up, this question is worth a total of 2,000. Are you ready? Now, spin the wheel. Well, you're mighty close. It came up six. Your numbers were seven and three. So here we go for a total of two grand. Ready? One of the best known and best equipped hospitals in the world is the famous U.S. Army Hospital in Washington, D.C. For two grand, what is the name of this internationally known hospital? to give these boys a chance to earn their money out there. What's the answer? Walter Reed. Walter Reed is right. You're right. <laughs> steady, Rab, steady. She's single, you know. <laughs> well, you want a total of $2,000. What are you going to do with your part? My mother has always wanted to go to Hawaii. So I'm all right. How are you? Where does she want to go? To Honolulu. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hawaii, oh, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I knew. What are you going to do with your money? Well, Groucho... You're going to Vegas now, huh? <laughs> no, not quite that, no. but uh, we need all the money we can get in our church. Oh, you're going to apply? And any donations, church? glad to receive. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you've won $1,000. That's pretty good for the well, night, isn't it? Peggy Brown and Governor Arnold won $600, and they're coming back right now to try for $10,000. Now, you pick a number from 1 to 10 for $10,000, and we'll put the number up here. Oh. Put a four. Oh. Four? <laughs> a four. And what you all say in there, Governor? Lucky seven. Well, I'll, you take one. <laughs> all right, now, if any number that these two comes up, the question is worth a total of two grand. Now, one of you spin the wheel. answer is no. It came up nine and your numbers were seven and four, so here we go for a total of 2,000. Here it is. California claims the only volcano still considered active in the continental United States. That's not including Alaska or Hawaii. You ready? For $2,000, what is the name of California's volcanic peak? Talk it over. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> well, it's uh, Mount Lassen. Sorry you missed it, but you still have uh, how much? Six hundred. Well, it's not too bad. Congratulations, <laughs> and it was delightful having you Thank both you up so here. Much. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. It was a pleasure meeting you, Thank Governor. You. <laughs> George, what do you got up your sleeve? Uh, Groucho, Johnny Ross, and James Dixon are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Johnny Ross and James, how do you do? Johnny Ross and James Dixon, man. Obviously, one of you is a female impersonator. Now, which one is it? I am. I'm Johnny Ross. What is the, the idea of calling yourself Johnny? Why did you get a boy's name instead well, of a name like uh, Alice or something? By the time my folks got around to me, they had so many kids that they ran out of names. Oh, it's like old Mother Hubbard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> old Mother Hubbard, she went to the cupboard to get her poor daughter a dress. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so was her daughter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and your name is Johnny Ross? Mm, James Dixon. Ja oh, James Dixon, huh? But what sort of work do you do, Jim? I'm a minister and teacher. A minister. Well, hand me the coal shovel, because... Uh, <laughs> get to work feeding those fires. <laughs> Reverend, I hope you don't consider this blasphemous, but based on the people I know, I have a hunch that the ones in the cellar are having a lot more fun than the ones up in the attic. Well, you can get a chance maybe sometimes going to the other place and finding out. <laughs> well, I was kind of planning on it. Huh? <laughs> you say you're a minister uh, yeah. and a teacher? Yes, sir. Uh, where do you do these uh, simultaneous <clears throat> jobs? Uh, Groucho, I'm minister for the Central Church of Christ in Anaheim and right. have been a teacher for George Pepperdine College 
here in Los Angeles in the Department of Business and Religion. Well, Johnny, that's, that's you. You haven't changed your name since I spoke to you no. last. What is your husband's name, Frankie? I don't have a husband. No. Oh. Well, are you interested in matrimony? Well, yes, but I'm in no hurry. No. Do you have someone in mind? No. No, I'm well, looking. perhaps I can find a husband for you. We have a well? standby minister here in case we get some action. <laughs> what qualifications uh, do you expect a man to have before you'd become interested enough to uh, pursue him? Well, he should be tall, 